it's Todd from Sideshow FX, and in this video I'm going to go over the installation process of our Photoshop Pro Profiles pack for the new Stream Deck Plus device. Now this pack is unique in that it comes with a set of 10 profiles that are all tied together. So if you follow along with me here in the video, I'll walk you through how to link everything together and get it up and running for you in no time. And I'll be demonstrating this on a Macintosh system. Most of the procedures are the same. Where it's different, I'll switch over to the Windows version and demonstrate that. Now, as always, we suggest that you follow the installation instructions in the PDF that's included with the pack, as it always has the most up-to-date information. But certainly this video can give you an overall view of how to do the procedures. If there are any differences to what you're finding, certainly check the PDF for the most recent additions. All right, so when you download your product, this is what you're going to see. The first step we're going to do is we're going to install our keyboard shortcut file. We have built this series of profiles with our dedicated set of keyboard shortcuts, which is built off of the Photoshop default set. But of course, we add a lot more in to give you a lot more ready shortcuts available. So we'll go to the keyboard shortcuts folder in your download and we have it divided between Mac and Windows. I'll just show you the Mac first. And we're going to have to drag and drop this into a specific location. And the location is your computer, users, your username, library, application support, Adobe, your version of Adobe that you're running. Right now I've got 2023. And in the presets folder. So inside the presets folder, there should be a keyboard shortcuts folder. If you don't find this, it is likely because you haven't yet created your own keyboard shortcut file within Photoshop and therefore the folder hadn't been made. So if you don't find this folder, create a new folder in this location, name it exactly keyboard shortcuts, and then we just take this file and we're gonna drop it straight into there. I already have it there, so I'm not gonna duplicate that procedure and that's where you'll find it. Now over on the Windows system, the path is your app data folder, roaming, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop and whatever version you're running, presets, and keyboard shortcuts. That's where you need to place the Photoshop SideFX Pro Toolkit Win document. Now once that file's in place, we'll go into Photoshop and we'll go into our edit menu, keyboard shortcuts, and in the set drop down, we will select that file that we just imported. And you would say, okay. And the keyboard shortcuts that you have just loaded will coincide with the shortcuts that we have put in the profiles. All right, the next step we're going to do is we've got a plugin in our pack here that we've developed and we need to install this into Stream Deck. So with your Stream Deck software open, you're just going to select this plugin and double click and it will install. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to overwrite it. Now the next thing we want to do, we've got a Trevor League Spell folder here. What this is, this holds MIDI graphics to help in the display of the graphics we've created for the dial strip. So it goes in a specific location, so if we go into our documents folder and you're going to click and drag this into the root of your documents folder once again I already have mine here as you can see and if you have another one of our packs that uses the Trivliga spell folder you may find that it is already here then what you would do in that case open up this folder and drag the mouse plugin folder into the Trivliga spell folder if it already exists on your system now the next thing to do we're going to import the profiles themselves. Now, this pack is a suite of different profiles that we will interlink together. Now, we've got 11 profiles here that we need to install. You can install them by going into uh, Stream Deck and opening up your profiles pane. And down here in the drop down, select import, and import them one at a time. But there is a quicker way, and that is to double click each one of these with your Stream Deck software open and make sure of course it's set to your 
correct device. If you have more than one device as I do, make sure the Stream Deck Plus device is selected. And with that open, you would double click each one of these to load it into the Stream Deck software. Now on the Mac system, you are able to select all of them. I'm going to shift select to select all of them and then double click and it will load all 11 in. In Windows, I'm finding that this doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes that will work, sometimes it doesn't. So to make sure that you are you have loaded all 11 in, you would want to double click each one of these through. So I'm going to demonstrate just clicking, double clicking each one and we will load them in. And there we go. Only takes a few seconds just to double click and load those in. Now we can see if we go to our pull down menu here, we can see that all 11 are here. If you want an overall view, click on your gear and go to profiles and you can see I have the Photoshop ones I just imported, all 11 have been imported here. Now since this is a suite of profiles, we have 11 different profiles that we've loaded in, we need to connect them to each other because unfortunately Stream Deck at this time does not retain the links that we create for them when we export out the profiles and get them delivered to you. So we have to recreate those links. Very simple procedure. So let's move to the main profile, Photoshop main. And you can see that we are presented with eight and what these are, these are switch profile keys. And so if I click on one of them, you can see what it does. The switch profile, when pressed on your device, it will open up a different profile of your choosing. Now, when we import it, you can see that it defaults to a default profile, but that's not what we want to open. When we press this key, we want to open the photography profile when we press this key. So to change that, click on profile, and select the photography profile here. So when we go to our device and click on photo, it opens the photography profile for us. So let's just go back to our main here and complete the other seven. Camera raw is going to open up, of course, the camera raw profile design. And I'll go quickly here as they're fairly self-explanatory. Okay, so we got all eight are now linked to the correct profile. So we have a styles profile and we have a liquify profile that is inside of one of these profiles. So if we look in the photography profile and you can see we've got eight pages in this profile. If I move over to page three here, you can see I also have Camera Raw, Liquify, and Filters here for convenience. So we do need to relink these as well. And you see if I click on Camera Raw, it doesn't have the same drop down here. That's because this is a nested effect. So if I double click this, that will open it up. Now when I click on the Switch Profile key here, I can then tell it to go to Camera Raw. Click our back button here to take us back out. Now this, now when we press that key, it will take us to the camera raw profile. Liquify, we haven't seen yet. So we'll double click this, click on the switch profile. We're going to select the liquify, liquify profile. Go back out and filters. We can select the profile directly from here and select filters. Now let's go back to the main. Now, if we were to go into the design profile, you'll see on the first page, we have one more here that we need to link, and this is styles. So we click on styles, and we will select our styles profile, and now all those keys have been linked. So we'll go back to main. Now there's one more step we need to do. We have successfully linked these keys to go to those specific profiles. In the case of photography, we go and press photo and we're in their photography profile. 
But now we need to get ourselves back to the main. Well, that's what these main keys are for. So by clicking on these, these are also switch profile keys. And we're just going to select the main. That way, every time I press photography and I work in the photography profile, I can always get back to my main page. And we'll do that with the rest of these. I'll click on camera raw, main, design, and while we're here, we'll go into styles, and instead of main, we're going to take this back to the design page, because that's where we just were. So now when I select back, we're able to bounce right back to the place we were instead of main and then since we've already mapped the main key this will take us back to main. Paint will take us to main. Manage main adjust main Filters, main, and swatches will take us to main. Now, if you remember, we have the liquify profile inside of photography. So we'll go to photography, we'll go to page three, we'll go into liquify. And we are going to direct this one back to photography. And to make sure we go back to exactly where we were, we'll pull this down to page three. So now when I press the main key in liquify, that takes us back to where we were. And then we can always swipe back to the first page and then we go back to main. Now we've been able to successfully relink all those profiles to each other. Let's start off with the photography profile. You can see from the Stream Deck software, it's demonstrating that we have eight pages that are built into this profile. Now in each one of these pages, the two rows of four buttons will change. We can access those pages just by swiping through all of them. And this gives us all the different commands available in this profile. Now let's open Photoshop. Start off with this image I took in Italy. Now the dial strip itself will demonstrate what the dial will do when rotated. But in addition, the dial strip also acts in the same way as, as these buttons do. When pressed, they will invoke an action in the software. As an example, if I press on the brush icon, Photoshop loads my brush tool. The icon next to it also loads the brush tool. This icon will, of course, load an eraser, and this icon will set the blend mode to normal. Now if we go back to the brush, let's just do a, a quick uh, demonstration here. You can see I have a brush uh, over top here. Rotating this dial will increase and decrease the size of my brush. So if I do this and then now the second dial does the same thing but there's a reason why these are separated. Is we're taking advantage of Stream Deck's dial stack feature. And that is, if I press on the dial, it will change the function of the rotary dial and change the function of pressing the dial strip. So I press it once. You can see our icon changes to a previous and next brush. By rotating the dial, we're going back and forth between the two brushes. And this one can stay as our brush size. Clicking this once again, we'll cycle through the different kinds of brushes we have in the brush tool palette. And pressing once more takes us back to the first brush. Now you'll know that there is a dial stack and therefore more tools available by pressing the dial in most cases by this little dial stack icon that's located there. So if I press on 
the second dial, it changes to the hardness function. So by rotating this, we'll change the hardness of my brush, pressing once again. This changes the flow if you're using a tablet and taking advantage of flow. Clicking once more, this will change the angle. So let's just flatten this out and then rotate and you can see we're able to affect the angle of our brush. Pressing once more takes us back to our brush size. Pressing in the eraser cycles through the eraser tool. So let's do a little more exploring. So let's go over to page two. We have the pen icon. So pressing the button loads the pen tool, pressing the dial, and then rotating will adjust which pen tool we're using. Get back to main tool. The healing brush. If we click on the healing brush and then rotate, we're adjusting the size of the healing brush. Let's just close this down. Clicking once cycles through the different healing brush tools that are under the healing menu. Press for magic wand. And we can cycle through the different magic wand tools and by pressing this does the same feature. These are just a little helpful to see when you rotate what tools are underneath here. And then the lasso tool. Clicking on lasso and then cycle through the different lasso tools. Swipe again. We have eyedropper. And we can cycle through the eyedropper tools. Clicking shows the different tools. Clicking on crop, we'll cycle through the crop and slice. And same thing here. Dodge, we can change the brush size, dodge burn and sponge tools. Clicking will cycle through dodge, burn and sponge and then the rotate tool. Unfortunately, the rotate tool when rotating, this does not rotate our image. We're hopefully gonna be able to get this unlocked in a future version. But for now, clicking on the rotate tool activates the rotate tool itself, but you'll still need to click with the mouse and rotate. Swipe again. We have the gradient tool, so clicking on gradient. Rotating will cycle through the different gradient types. Pressing will cycle through the gra different gradient tools. Press again. We have an art history brush. Rotates, increases and decreases the brush size. Pressing again will take you from history brush to art history brush. Clone stamp, rotating increases and decreases size of the clone stamp. Pressing once, change from a clone stamp to a pattern stamp. And then the frame tool. Swipe. Now this is a good time to introduce you to our parameter control feature. Now I'll show you how this works. Let's say, and as you can see above in the uppercase here, this section is for our um, layer adjustments. If I want to make a uh, layer adjustment on hue and saturation, I'm gonna click on, uh, I, I've made a quick garbage mask in this layer above here for the sky. And if I select the hue saturation, so I'm gonna make a uh, adjustment layer for hue saturation, I'm gonna click the box for uh, use previous layer as a clipping mask. Say OK. Now you can see we've got under our properties we've got the um, settings for our hue saturation. So let's click on just one of the boxes here. 
I have hue uh, highlighted. Now if I rotate this slider adjustment tile, I can adjust the hue. Now if I press this once more, I have finer control over the hue. You saw if, if I go here to coarse, it's moving it in much larger increments in, in uh, units of 10. If I click on it to the fine adjustment with the uh, yellow icon, it's moving it in units of 1, so it's a finer adjustment. Now the dial next to it will allow me to access the previous or next parameter function. So by rotating it once down, I can now start affecting saturation. Down once more, I can affect lightness. Now the other two dials here, they give us some layer uh, controls. So I just made a few extra layers here, just solid color, just to make it easy to see. So with these dials here, we can move our layers up and down. So you can see I'm moving, I'm moving our white layer up and down, and even all the way to the bottom if I wanted. The next dial over, will allow us to select which layer we want to work on. I can select this layer and then move it down, select this layer, move it up, etc. Now let's swipe over once again. We have some layer uh, styles that we can load in and with these functions we can copy the layer style and paste the layer style. More of the same slider adjustments, layer control, and we now have a zoom function. Slide once more to the last page of this profile, and you can see with this dial, this allows us to navigate any open documents that we have. And I have some, you can see along the tabs along the top, I have different images that we're going to be working on, and I can just rotate this to go through the different images. Now when I'm zoomed all the way in, I can then use my vertical and horizontal canvas move to move around the image. One more swipe takes us back to the first page of our photo profile and we can bounce back out to the main. We're going to this design. Now you'll find there are some repeated commands that we've got in here. They're really organized for the different disciplines that you might find yourself working in, such as photography or design or painting. So the design one is laid out we try to include and organize the tools you might find in a typical design workflow. But as with all of our packs, they're really designed for you to use as a starting point and you can feel free to move items around very easily. You can copy and paste items, you can even create new ones that you might not find in the profile itself. So a lot of these tool functions in the dial strip will already be familiar to you. We have uh, the move and artboard tool, we have uh, the, the shape tool, which you haven't seen yet, and it also uh, will cycle through the different shapes. And we have a type tool. So if I hit type tool, it launches my type tool here. Swipe once more, and over one more time, we have our type control functions here. So by rotating this, I can change the size of the type. I can change the kerning. If we go make a second, line here and select a portion. I can change the lighting between the two and I can also change the selection expansion. Swipe once more. If I just select our text item itself by clicking, by rotating these controls I can do a fine-tune adjustment of their positioning. Clicking each one of these gives a course adjustment. And our familiar layer controls here as well. Now there's a lot that's in this, including some major additions with this version of Photoshop uh, Pro Pack for the Stream Deck Plus. A lot of it works out of the box, but some of it you do need to set up for your own specific workstation. And so I'm going to go over and detail how you do that. The process is actually very simple 
And depending on which controls you find that you use, you can do all of them or just do what you need. And you can always add more as your needs require. So let's give you a sample of how this is working. So let's go into design and I'm going to go into styles. Now on this first page of styles, you see we have five pages in this style profile. What this will allow us to do is at the click of a button, we'll be able to add a particular layer style to our currently selected layer and to be able to adjust the parameters within that layer style. All right, for simplicity's sake, I've got just a average old purple rectangle. And as you can see on our first page, we have available to us bevel and emboss. Uh, so let's try and put in a bevel and emboss on that by pressing the bevel and emboss key. That brings up our dialog box here. Now, if you're on a Windows system, you can just start selecting any of the parameters on the device and rotating the appropriate dial, and you'll be able to control those parameters. If you're working on a Mac, the same thing. You should be able to just start adjusting without having to do any programming required as long as you're running Photoshop 2023. Anything earlier, you will need to set the parameters yourself, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. But just to show how it works out of the box, you can see that we've got several controls available to us in the dial strip. Now how this works is we do something we call um, dial splitting, which means we can indicate up to four different controls for each one of the dials. If you take a look at dial number one, we have three controls that we can control for this particular dial. And we select which control we're adjusting by pressing on that part of the dial strip. So as an example, if I want to adjust the size of this bevel, I can click on size there. You can see it highlights and also presents a green arrow indicating that that is the active function for when I rotate this dial. And then by rotating the dial, you can see the size of my bevel is increasing and decreasing. If I want to change the depth, I click on that part and you can see I can change the depth and the softness, click on that, and I can adjust our softness there. Now, if I want to adjust the angle that's over top of dial number two, you can see we've got two controls that are assigned to dial two, angle and altitude. So we can see that angle is already selected. Just by rotating the dial, we can adjust our angle. Pressing on altitude, adjust the altitude of our shading. Dial number three also has two assignments to it. We can see we have highlight opacity is currently selected. So rotating dial three, we're adjusting the highlight opacity, pressing on the second one, shadow opacity, allows us to control that parameter as well. Now you can see we have a few additional keys that are available that are showing that they are bevel controls. They are being able to turn on and off the global light. So by pressing this, you can see our global light turned on and turned off. With the preview key, we can turn on and off the preview. And we have the up and down radio buttons also available to us. Pressing down will make the effect appear down, and this will make the effect appear up. So if we're happy with the adjustments we've made, pressing in any one of these dials will enter that value and close the dialog box. You can see that we've got stroke uh, available to us here on this page. So if we click on stroke, our stroke dialog box comes up. And we can see we can adjust size. And opacity. And we can also turn on and off the preview of our stroke. And of course, pressing in the dial enters that value and closes the dialog box. Now, as mentioned before, we have five pages in this styles profile. So let's just swipe the dial screen to get to the second page. So on this one, you can see that we have drop shadow and inner shadow available to us. So let's add a drop shadow. Up pops the dialog box. And you can see that we've got opacity is currently highlighted just by rotating the first dial. We can adjust the opacity of our drop shadow. So let's turn it way up so we can see it. 
Now we can adjust the angle by pressing on the second one and we can rotate to increase our angle. We can go to the second dial here and with our distance, adjust distance, adjust the size, the spread, and if we wanted to add noise into it. We can turn on and off the preview and we can also turn on and off our global light with those controls. And pressing the dial enters that value. Inner shadow works the same way. Dial three adjusts our opacity, our angle, and dial four with our distance, size, the choke, and also the noise. Let's move to page three. I think by now you're understanding how these work. We have gradient overlay, pattern overlay, and satin. On the Windows system, you're only gonna have gradient overlay. We don't have satin and pattern, pattern overlay on the Windows system. Okay, so what if you are running a Macintosh with a version earlier than 2023? or for some reason you're finding that the controls are not working out of the box on a Windows system, which they should be, but in case there is an occasion in which they don't. How do you get these to control the parameters on your system? Well, it is a very easy process. Let's take the example of Bevel and Emboss. Open up the window. And let's say that we want to record the position of our global light. So what we would do is take our mouse, hover over top of that checkbox for global light. You go to the global light key here and you press and hold for about a second and you see a green check mark there. That indicates that position has been recorded on your system. It is saved in your profile. Now anytime you want to turn the global light on and off, that key will now work for you. And it's the same process for any one of the keys up here. But if you want to adjust the dials themselves, it's the same sort of process. So let's say we want to adjust the depth of this parameter. We're going to mouse over the value box itself. So now with my mouse sitting over top of that, so I'm going to tap on depth and I'm gonna press and hold the dial until you see location saved comes up. Now I know that that location, whenever I start rotating, it will start adjusting. It will jump to that location and start adjusting for me. And you can do that for any of the other keys that you see that you need. Tap on size, hover over size box here, press and hold that same dial and now we can adjust size. So that's the process you will use should you need to record any of these positions. And those positions will stay locked to your system, particularly with, with these windows, you can move this around, it doesn't matter. Your, your position will be locked to that location. Now there's a few parameters you can adjust if you like. So you can click on any one of these dials. Let's click on the first one here and you'll see that we get a, a, a dialog uh, pop up here. In this section, the dial rotate action, what this tells you is that you can change from dynamic to a fixed. What that means is if we change to fixed, we can control the speed at which parameters change when you rotate the dial. If it's on dynamic, we ship it by dynamic uh, by default. And what this means is the faster you rotate, the faster the value will change and the slower you rotate, the slower the value changes. But if you want to have something where it doesn't matter how fast or slow you rotate the dial, it always does a consistent speed, then you can choose to switch this over. And this is on a per dial basis. Each one of these has its own control to adjust for that. And you will also see we have reversed the direction of the wheel. These are programmed to rotate in an intuitive way, but there are several people who use a scroll reverser, and so you may find that it's backwards for you. That's why this box is here. You can check that 
in case the rotation seems backwards to how you'd like to use it. You'll also see that we've got a slider down here that allows us to control the visibility of the non-selected items. In this case, you can see I've got DAL2 selected and you can see my currently altitude is brighter than angle. I can adjust this by making the non-selected item completely disappear or be completely opaque. We ship it in this configuration. If you want to change it, that's entirely up to you how you prefer to work and you would change this on a per dial basis. Now, if you find that you are needing to record your own positions like I just demonstrated, once you have recorded them, you can choose to select this box, say locked position, and then when you're working in Photoshop, should you press on the dial for a long period of time, you can see it tells you that it's locked, that you are not able to change that position. If I was to press and hold on any of the other dials I haven't locked, it will re-record the position of the item currently selected to wherever your mouse is currently sitting. So it's just a protection against doing that sort of thing. That's your choice if you wanna go through and lock each one of these, you can lock these positions and therefore pressing and holding on the dial by mistake is not going to re-record those positions incorrectly. So that's layer styles. Should work out of the box for all Windows users. It will work out of the box for Mac users using 2023. If you're using a version other than that, you will have to record those positions. But as you saw, the recording of the positions is actually very quick and it's stored in your profile. You won't need to do them again. Okay, let's go back out to our main. Now let's go into Camera Raw here. And we'll apply a Camera Raw filter to this photograph I took in Tuscany. Now let's move to the new section that we just included here. This gives us dedicated dial controls to specific functions in Camera Raw. Now in order for these functions to work as expected, it is a good idea to right click anywhere on, on your control pane here, right click and we're going to enable single panel mode and have it in normal. The single pa panel mode indicates that only one of these panels will open at any given time and this prevents the items from being moved up and down after you've recorded these positions. So if I press on basic, that will open my basic panel. Now unlike layer styles, you most likely will have to record these positions. You may find that they do line up depending on your version of Camera Raw that you're running. So if I was to, for example, work on temperature, you can see I am able to make that adjustment, but yours might be misaligned, particularly with the different versions of Camera Raw. They add and subtract areas up in this top area that will move the XY positioning of your controls. So we can record these the same way we recorded the layer styles. The difference is with these controls, we don't place our and hover our cursor over the value box. We're gonna place it over the title of each control instead. You can see it turns to a hand with a couple of arrows indicating that I can adjust this by moving back and forth. So we're gonna mouse over that area with temp selected press and hold the dial and you can see we have location saved so now rotating this dial allows me to adjust temperature and if i do that for tint exposure and contrast for dial number one then i can quickly make my adjustments for each one of those. Same thing with dial two. I would hover over highlights, for example, with highlights selected, press and hold the dial key. I can do shadows, make sure shadows is selected, press and hold. Whites, press, press and hold. And blacks, black, press and hold. And now those are saved. And as long as I don't change 
the positioning of this control panel, I'll always be able to adjust these whenever I open Camera Raw. And you'd go through and do the same thing for the rest of the controls here, the clarity, the haze, vibrance, saturation, texture. So in your PDF, these are highly detailed as to what controls correspond with, with the parameters in the user interface. So please refer to the PDF for those accurate descriptions. Scrolling to the next page, we can see we have access to curves, detail, and color mixing on this particular page. Same sort of setup, where if I press curves, it closes the basic panel and opens up curve. That's because we have it on single panel mode. And once you program them, you can control the different parameters here for each one of them. Now you see I also have a curves folder underneath our curves icon. By pressing this, this opens up the same controls of curves we just adjusted, but on a dedicated page per dial. So now with this page, I can just immediately start adjusting highlights, lights, my darks, and my shadows on each dedicated dial. Now when we take a look at detail, you can see we, we can open up our detail panel and if we have already programmed our sharpness noise reduction and color noise reduction, we'll be able to make those adjustments. And just like the curves, we can get into a dedicated page for detail where sharpen, noise reduction, and color noise reduction can all be adjusted very easily. Now the next one, you can see we have color mixing, so we press on that to open up the color mixing panel. And you can see I've got it set to adjust color here. Let's change this to HSL so that we can have all the individual color channels showing for us. And what you would do is mouse over each one of these, so with reds selected, press and hold to record that position, and now I can control my red. And since I've already done these ones, I can jump around to each one of these controls and adjust those colors. Same thing with the fourth dial. I've already pre-programmed aquas and blues, etc. I can adjust any of those. Now if we go into the dedicated color mixing, you can see that we have two controls per dial. You might find this makes it a little more accessible so I can control reds and then immediately control my greens Press on yellows to control yellows, do blues, purples, and magentas, etc. Let's swipe over and you can see that we have what we just moved away from in our adjust drop down. We can select this back to color and these will allow us to adjust the hue and saturation and luminance of each of the individual eight colors that we have presented here. And we can select which color we want to jump to by pressing each one of these radial buttons and that will switch us to that color. Now likely you will need to record those positions, so mouse over red for example, press and hold till we get the green check mark. Same thing with orange, press and hold. And you just go through and do all of those colors so that you can just jump to each one. And then once you have set the hue, saturation, and luminance parameters by mousing over hue, for example, pressing and holding on hue, saturation, press hold at saturation, and press and hold on luminance. And now you can make these adjustments in the currently selected color, which is purple. I want to now adjust my oranges, switch to the orange, and now I can adjust the hue of my oranges, saturation, and how bright my oranges are. Moving to the next page, same configuration, but this time we have optics, geometry, and effects. And you would go through and set the parameters for each one of these. Distortion, press and hold. Mouse over vignette, press and hold. Those are recorded. And you won't need to do this again as long as your control panel stays in the same location. 
Same thing for geometry, which can be controlled by dials two and three. You see all the different parameters available there. And effects allows us to control the grain and the vignetting on that side. Swiping once more takes us into camera calibration. That opens up that dialog for us. And if you set it for tint, you can control your tint. We can jump into red primary, saturation, red primary hue, green saturation, etc. And once again, you would just set these by mousing over that particular title. In this case, red primary hue, press and hold. Back to the first page, if we click a healing brush, and we want to start working with the healing brush, we also have a brush function that allows us to control the size. And of course, we can zoom in it as we need. So now when we're going to paint, once again, a lot of these will be familiar, but they're reorganized for a digital paint sort of workflow. So if I just get a blank canvas here, and I click on my paintbrush, now I've got a color loaded here, but I, I don't want to use that color and I, I want to start with a nice color palette. What we've got here, if I swing over to page four and click on swatches, this will load our swatches profile. This gives us pages and pages of swatch palettes with preloaded colors to find into, into swatch groups based on different themes. Red, green, blue, popular, vibrant, earth, and gray. Now if we're going to do, let's say popular, we pick, uh, let's say we want to use uh, this color palette. So we have these colors presented to us. Clicking on any one of the five colors here will load that color into our foreground. Let's say I like this gold. So it loads that into my color foreground, and now when I paint, I'm painting with that color. But let's say I want to retain these and load them into my uh, swatches palette. Let's click on swatches to open up the swatches panel. And then by clicking on this button here, this will build a swatch group based on these five colors. Now this does only work in RGB. If you're working in CMYK mode, uh, these will not work. So there you have your swatch file. Now what we do is we can uh, bounce out of here and then go back to, unfortunately this takes us back to main, so we'll have to go back into where we were in paint. And now when I start painting, now you see that it will automatically load up the last color it entered into the swatch panel. But I can easily, of course, just pick the color that I want and I can start painting with it. And I can use these adjustments to increase, decrease, change the feather, change the angle, and then quickly choose from the color palette I preloaded to change my color palette. Now rotating the blend mode while we have the brush active will change the blend mode of the brush itself. If we have another tool loaded, it will change the blend mode of the layer currently selected. And of course, if you're off a completely different blend mode here, tapping it will load the normal blend mode. And we'll go ahead to uh, page four here and this allows us to select our colors in the color panel. So along the top here, this allows us, with our color panel open, this allows us to jump between four different color spaces. We have RGB, which I currently have open right now. We can select CMYK, HSB, or LAB. Let's go back to RGB. Now this does not work out of the box. You do need to record these positions. So what we recommend is that you put your color panel in a position that it is unlikely going to get moved. If you put the color panel, say, in a lower area of your stack, it can easily move up and down depending on what is above and below it. So we do recommend it is a good practice to maybe put it in a position that it is not going to move so that these parameters will stay in the same place. And like we've done in the past, we're going to position our mouse over top of a value box, in this case the red value box, with red selected on dial 1, pressing and holding, that records that position. Move to green, press green on 
our dial strip, press and hold, and blue, press and hold. We've saved those locations. Now, whenever we want to adjust our colors with our dials, it's as simple as that. Now you also notice that we have a folder underneath our RGB sliders. This allows us a dedicated page to the red, green, blue. We can program each one of these. Let's mouse again over red, press and hold. Green, press and hold. And blue, press and hold. And now I can adjust the red, green, and blue with dedicated dials. And you notice that my value is currently selected. We can press in the dial quickly and that just enters that value and allows us to then move on to a different color space if we choose. So if we want to move into CMYK, now press CMYK, that pops up in the color panel and we can set these parameters. Let's move to cyan, magenta, yellow and black and now these are saved for us and whatever I select I can make those adjustments and once again you won't need to do this again as long as your color panel stays in that position in your interface. CMYK also has its own dedicated page that we can control the cyan, magenta, yellow and black with dedicated dials quickly set those and now we have dedicated dials for CMYK. Hue saturation brightness works the same way dedicated to dial 3 and it has its own dedicated page and LAB the same thing for dial 4, and LAB has its own dedicated page. Okay, let's go into the photography profile here. We'll swing over to page 3. We're going to go into liquify, because I'm going to demonstrate our liquify feature here. And if we move over, these are the shortcuts uh, that are available to us. If we go into page 3 here, we've added in the controls for the face aware liquify parameters. Now, like in some previous parts of these profiles, we would position our mouse over the value box. In this case, this is the left eye size. So you click left eye here, and then press and hold in the dial to record that position where our mouse is currently sitting. Same thing with right eye. Press and hold, we record that position, and now we can adjust the size of the eye, the right eye, here's the size of the left eye, we can reduce or enlarge it. We can position our mouse over this lock so that we can lock the right and left eye together and press and hold our size lock here. And now when we press on that, that locks those two together, it doesn't matter, left or right, we can adjust those both together. And you can do that and program those coordinates for each one of these controls as you need so that you can adjust any part of this liquify filter. And we can lock all this, lock all these together. And then let's do something like eye tilt. Now they're locked together. You can see that we're tilting the eye, changing the width. And we can even do eye distance, which is over here on dial number three. We can adjust the distance. Change the tilt again. We also have control over if you if you had recorded the parameters for nose height. We can go to nose height here, press and hold. Now we can adjust nose height, nose width. We can change the lip. 
width of the mouth. We can give her a smile here. Now that's if you've gone through and you've programmed each of these locations. All right, now let's get into adjust here. You can see that we have a lot of parameters we can control with image adjustments. So our first one being brightness and contrast. By pressing on that, that brings up our dialog box. Now with these, once again, you should not need to have to record these positions if you're on Windows or if you're running the Macintosh version of Photoshop 2023. If you're using an earlier version in 2023, you may have to record these positions. And the way you would do that, of course, the same procedure. Position your mouse over the value box with brightness selected on the first dial, press and hold the dial, and that records that position. And now you can adjust the brightness. But you should be able to work straight out of the box when your dialog box opens up to control brightness and contrast. You shouldn't need to record these and tapping on the dial enters that value and closes the dialog box. Same thing with levels. We open up our levels dialog and we can immediately start adjusting our image. And dial number three has our output levels, our output black and our output white and pressing in the dial records that change. Dial four is dedicated for exposure. So we can adjust our exposure of our image. Swipe to page two. We can do shadows and highlights. Now we can get into Vibrance to bring out our colors on dial number two. Increase our saturation. Enter the value. Hue and saturation. We can immediately start adjusting the hue. Saturation. And our lightness. And then of course color balance allows us to control the cyan to red, magenta to green, and our yellow to blue. Okay, let's swipe to the third page. We can turn our image to a black and white and control all the different parameters of the black and white image. So going into black and white converts it to a grayscale image. With reds, we can adjust the balance of the reds, greens, yellows, etc. Go into blues, bring out the blues a little more. We can turn the preview on and off to see the adjustments we've made. We can make an auto balance on this or turn, turn it into a tint. So we can now adjust our hue saturation of our tint here. Let's undo that. We also have channel mixer and by rotating on our fourth dial we can rotate the red, green, blue and the constant. Now on this page we have HDR toning so we can press HDR toning and right out of the box you should be able to start controlling your radius, your strength, and the gamma, the exposure, detail along with the third dial give us access to these functions and of course we have a preview and for the fourth dial is dedicated to our selective color so we can choose the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black of this image to adjust. Now on this page, we can make some adjustments with adjustment layers. Now because these are not floating windows, these are controls that appear in our control panel. 
they don't work out of the box and you will have to assign where these coordinates are on your user interface. Once again, we recommend because the adjustment layer controls appear under your properties pane, that you place your properties pane in a place in your UI where it is unlikely to be moved. So in the case of brightness and contrast, we press this, it'll give us the dialog box. For the new layer, we just say okay. And now you can see our adjustments for brightness contrast appear in our properties. We'll want to record the position of brightness and contrast, mouse over the value of the parameter itself with it selected here as it is on dial one, press and hold, that location gets saved. We'll do contrast, press on contrast, save, and now I can always adjust the brightness and contrast from here. You see we have an auto box as well. We can mouse over the auto box, press and hold on auto underneath the brightness contrast, and that will allow us to access that whenever we need it. And you would go through and do this for each one of these adjustment layers as you need them. You don't need to do them all at once. If you find that you're working and you want to apply a levels adjustment layer, press that, apply it. It appears in your properties. If you then want to control these parameters, you would then record those positions. So for our input black with it selected there, input mid and our input white, and now I can record these whenever I need them. And pressing in will enter that value. So we also have exposure here, done the same way. Swing over into the next page, you can see we have hue saturation dedicated to dial one with our hue saturation lightness controls, color balance, black and white, all these layer adjustments can be controlled. Once again, refer to the PDF for the detailed instructions of which controls go with which part of our profile. Filters does much the same thing. And we can apply any of these effects. If you want a motion blur, we can adjust that angle parameter, go down to distance, click the button for OK and more pages. There's four pages in total of these filters. One more swipe, main page, and we have swatches directly accessible. It's the same one I showed you inside the previous profile. So that's it. That's the Photoshop for the Stream Deck Plus device. I hope this gives you a good idea of what's involved and where you can find things. There's lots to explore in here. And like I said before, Feel free to move things around how you like to use them. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll hope to talk to you soon.